All right, so we're going to look here at some acid-base properties of salt solutions. And you probably remember that we, when we play mixy-mixy with an acid and a base, we get a neutralization reaction. And what we always used to say is when you mix an acid and a base, you produce a salt and water. Okay, now that salt, that solution of salt water, may be neutral, but it oftentimes might still be slightly acidic or basic. Now, when we were talking about neutralization reactions and producing salt and water, we typically always said that we were looking at a neutralization of a strong acid with a strong base, like hydrochloric acid and sodium hydroxide. So when you do have strong acid, strong base neutralization, your salt solution will be neutral. But more often, we're going to see slightly acidic or slightly basic salt solutions when we have the neutralization of weak acids or weak bases. So if you look in your book on page 669, there's some rules that go there. So perhaps you might want to look through those in addition to this video. But eventually, you're going to be able to predict whether or not a salt solution will be acidic, basic, or neutral. And it all has to do with where the ions come from in the salt that is being formed. OK, so when we look at this example, Right. It says, a salt of a strong base and a strong acid will give a neutral aqueous solution. That's what we just said. Here's my example, sodium hydroxide, hydrochloric acid. Sodium chloride in water is completely ionized. The sodium ion and the chloride ion, they are unreactive with water, so we, typically, we just have a salt water solution. And as it says, there are no hydrolyzable ions. And we'll look exactly what that means here in a second. All of our ions that come from our strong acids and, acids and bases do not hydrolyze. So this chart is a little bit further down in your notes, but it is really important to know which ions come from our strong acids and bases. From our strong acids, we get all of these negative ions. And from our strong bases, we get those positive ions. So again, these do not hydrolyze, and they're going to be important in, as far as predicting uh, what type of salt solution that we will have. So here's the next situation. A salt of a strong base and a weak acid will give us a basic aqueous solution. So here we have sodium hydroxide, which is a strong base, reacting with hydrogen cyanide, which is a weak acid. And so when that happens, we get sodium cyanide and water. And so that sodium cyanide will dissolve, hydrolyze. And so we'll see that what's going to react with water. Well, again, the ions from our strongs do not. This sodium ion, coming from sodium hydroxide, will not hydrolyze. But the cyanide ion will. And so when we look at that, we see that cyanide will react with water will make more of the HCN, okay, but it will also produce hydroxide. And so by producing some of those hydroxide ions, that's why our salt solution here will be slightly basic. So you can see here I have a definition for hydrolysis. If you have a base ion reacting with water, you'll form the conjugate acid and hydroxide ions. So that's how we'll know we'll have a basic salt solution because we're going to be making hydroxide ions. If you have an acid ion reacting with water, you would get the conjugate base, but you would get hydronium ions, so our salt solution will be acidic. And that's what we see here with our third situation. If we have a salt that's made from a weak base and a strong acid, we'll see acidic. Okay, so ammonia, a weak bat, bass, sorry, base, and hydrochloric acid, strong acid, it will react and make ammonium chloride. Okay, but again, chloride being from a strong acid, that ion will not hydrolyze. Ammonia will, and so when we look at that reaction, ammonium, sorry, ammonium plus water will make ammonia, so it's going to make some of the conjugate base, but it's going to make hydronium. And the presence of that hydronium will make the salt water solution acidic. So we've seen strong, strong, and we've seen weak and strong. Our last situation is weak, weak. If we have a salt that's made 
with a weak base and a weak acid, both ions hydrolyze. So whether or not some, the solution will be acidic or basic is going to depend on the relative strengths of the ions, which we can see through the Ka values. Okay, And so Ka and Kb. Here we have weak base ammonia, weak acid HCN, and so we get NH4CN. They're both weak. Now when I look at the Ka for ammonium, I see it's 5.6 times 10 to the negative 10th. When I look at the Kb for cyanide, it's 2 times 10 to the negative 5th. So this salt solution will be basic because of the fact that my Kb is bigger than my Ka. All right. So what you can generally be asked to do is predict if a salt solution will be acidic, basic, or neutral. And again, as I mentioned before, this is when you have to know which ions come from our strongs. Because if we can label those strongs, then the rest come from weaks. So here's my first prediction. Potassium chloride. So if I have a solution of potassium chloride in water, what is the pH of that solution going to be? Well, I see that my potassium is a strong coming from my strong base, potassium hydroxide. Chloride is also strong, coming from like hydrochloric acid. So two strongs will give me a neutral salt solution. All right. Next up, I've got sodium fluoride. Sodium coming from the strong base, sodium hydroxide. And then I have fluoride. Fluoride is not one of my strongs, so it's a weak. And so when I have a strong base ion and a weak acid anion, strong base ion and a weak acid ion, that's when I know my salt solution will be basic. And you can see that strong ion coming from the base, and so therefore we'll have a basic solution. That's, that helped me remember it. Next we have zinc nitrate. Okay. Zinc does not come from our strongs, but nitrate does. Nitrate from nitric acid. And so in this situation, we have weak, strong, and that will give us an acidic solution. Lastly, letter D, here we have ammonium nitrite. Both of those are weak, so I would have to check my K values. And you can see Ka for ammonium versus Kb for nitrite. Ka is greater than Kb, so this would give me an acidic solution. So being able to predict salt solutions and their pH is one thing, but of course ultimately we'd like to get to some calculations involving that. The first step is the fact that typically our Ka and Kb values for our conjugates are not found listed in tables. So there is an important fact that Ka times Kb will give us Kw. So we have that tie-in factor again with our ion product constant for water. So just like with the Strong's when we said hydronium times hydroxide, Ka times Kb will give us that. So for example, HCN is a weak acid. And if I look on a table, I will typically find the Ka value for HCN. However, I typically will not find a Kb value for my cyanide ion, even though that is the conjugate base of HCN. So what you have to do is you would have to take your Ka value given to you, remember that your ion product constant for water, and be able to do the quick solving of that problem that we'll see here in a second in order to get our Kb. Now, not only is Ka times Kb equal to Kw, but just like pH plus pOH equals 14, so does pKa plus pKb. So that's another fact that could potentially come in handy at some point. So again, I know my Ka for HCN. If I go to the table, 4.9 times 10 to the negative 10. What is the Kb for cyanide? I simply would have to take my Kw divided by Ka. Again, this is just like when we were doing hydronium hydroxide. Ammonia, weak base, I can always find that Kb value on a table, but I typically will not find a Ka value for ammonium. So if I needed that, again, I would simply take my Kw 
divided by the KB in order to get that KA. So again, why would I ever really need to know that? And that's for this last problem here, to find the pH of a salt solution. So here we go. What is the pH of a 0.1 molar solution of sodium nicotinate at 25 degrees Celsius, our magic 25, because that's what our Ks are very dependent on. And the given information for me is that the Ka for H-nic, nicotinic acid, is 1.4 times 10 to the negative fifth. So the hardest part here, I think, is knowing which reaction to write. Okay, so I have a solution of sodium nicotinate. So you have to recognize, oh, sodium, that is a non-hydrolyzable ion. It come, it's, comes from my strong sodium hydroxide. So I'm only concerned about the nicotinate ion. If you remember from previous problems, I had that as NIC negative. So in that solution, I would have the nicotinate ion reacting with water. And of course, it is going to accept a hydrogen from the water. It's going to create the conjugate acid, but it's going to create hydroxide. And so by seeing that, or by memorizing strong, weak, that we are going to end up with a basic solution. So we're looking for a pH answer greater than 7. So here I have my equilibrium reaction. I would set up an ice table. Okay, I have a 0.1 molar solution of the nicotinate ion to start with. And then ultimately, though, we would just want to get to our equilibrium expression. So I would have 0.1 minus x for nicotinate, and then my x's on the product side, and ignore the water. And from this now, I can set up my equilibrium expression. KB, because this is a base, all right, we're producing hydroxide, is equal to x squared over 0.1 minus x. So I want to know what those values are going to be equal to. But I don't know my KB value. I'm only given KA. But we just saw that all I have to do is take KW divided by my Ka, and now I have my Kb for sodium nicotinate, or just the nicotinate ion. Do I have to use the quadratic here? Doubtful. Look at that Kb value of 10 to the negative 10. Okay, 0.1, my concentration divided by 7.1 times 10 to the negative 10 is going to be huge, so no quadratic necessary. So of course, with no quadratic, I can ignore the minus x, so kb equals x squared over 0.1. Multiply my kb by 0.1, take the square root, ta-da, I have x. x is equal to 8.4 times 10 to the negative 6th molar, which, if you remember from up above, that's hydroxide. So now you have choices. In order to get the pH of this solution, you can switch that to hydronium and then take the negative log to get pH. Or you can take the negative log of this and subtract from 14. Whichever way you choose, you can get your pH value. But again, we're looking for a value greater than 7 because we're producing hydroxide ions. So hopefully that is what we get. I chose the pOH route, so when I take the negative log, subtract from 14, I find that the pH of this solution is 8.9, and hopefully you did as well. All right, so that's it for this section. Um, again, predicting salt solutions, we're going to practice that, as well as these uh, p finding pHs of salt solutions, these types of problems, we're going to practice those in class, and also run through a little lab experiment where you find the pHs of different saltwater solutions and hope that they match your predictions. All right, have a good one. Until later.